Hey guys, this is Will, welcome back. And now I wanna talk a little bit about using synthesizers in Reaper. Um, there's a couple shortcuts that Reaper just gives you, but I'm actually gonna do everything manually just so that you really understand exactly what's going on. Um, so starting with the simplest thing you can do, that would be a monophonic synth, meaning one audio output and one MIDI input. To do that, literally you just make a track, choose your synthesizer as uh, an effect basically, and you're actually finished. This is all you need to do. You just have to uh, change the MIDI, change the input to a MIDI input. And now this, what I just did there is to um, turn on monitoring. So basically MIDI through and then arm the track. And now it'll just play. Uh, so that's just that. More complicated is if you want to do polyphonic synths, um, meaning one audio output, but several MIDI inputs. So um, if, for example, contact, which I'll show next, you would want maybe 16 or more uh, MIDI channels to root into contact. For that, you will actually have to make more tracks. So let's uh, start this over. Um, by the way, uh, as you're doing this, you might want to actually, you know, as you're loading your favorite synths and whatnot, you might want to actually just create a template. Um, the way the way to do that, once I, let's just do this again. Okay. Um, now I have my track set up. It's armed. It's got the right kind of monitoring. It's got the right kind of MIDI input, and it has uh, it has the synthesizer I want. If I go right click and save selected tracks as track template. I can now just say Helix. And insert track from template, Helix synth. Everything just pops right up. Everything is set up exactly as I needed to. So you might as well just go through and do this with all of your synthesizers. Um, it'll save you a little bit of time. Now on to contact. Uh, so, like usual, you insert a track, bring uh, contact in here. Um, now, a couple things just happened. It put in this track, but what we want to do is add some MIDI tracks. So I'm just going to put in a few. And again, like I said in the very first video, there really is no such thing as a MIDI track and an audio track. So what we're really doing is we're going to send MIDI data from these tracks into the synthesizer track. So I'm just gonna name this. And um, you can do it from here. You can add new send and contact for all of them. Um, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna do that from contact. Just add receive, add receive from all tracks. That'll just save a little bit of time. So now I have all these. It's going to, right now by default, it's taking everything and putting it to everything. What I'm gonna do is, uh, MIDI all would mean that all the MIDI that's coming from this track will go to everything in contact. So what we need to do is change the contact destination to the appropriate MIDI channel. So let's name these a little bit more sensibly. One, two, three, four. And now one will go to one, two, three, and, oh, and four. Okay, so now what's happening is all of this is basically terminating there. Um, another little thing that you might want to take a look at, it does this by default. You'll see this um, master parent send here. Um, that's, I'll explain a little bit more detail in a bit, but basically that says that this is going to play the actual audio that comes in. So for now, this is correct. Since we're only using one output for contact, you wanna leave this checked because that'll mean that it will actually give audio out. When you're using multiple outs, then actually you will uncheck this and have it checked for your audio outputs, but I'll show that in just a sec. Um, so without any further ado, let's open some instruments. Doesn't really matter. Um, what I want to do now is make it so that every time I click one of these, it automatically arms the track. It does everything it really needs to. 
The command that you want to look for is set all tracks to automatic record arm. Now whenever I click a track, it automatically arms it. We're not finished yet because it still thinks that these are audio tracks and we want them all to be MIDI. So I'm just going to go through and change these to MIDI. MIDI input. And there you have it. Now all the MIDI that comes into these tracks will be sent to contact. Um, if you started playing with the controller and you're wondering why are you not hearing anything, that's because you didn't monitor, turn monitoring on. Now the monitoring is on, it'll just play like that. Um, you'll want to do that if, if you're using a MIDI controller to play your instrument. And that's that. Once again, you'll probably want to save templates. Um, what I find is the easiest way to do this actually is to parent them to a folder. So I'm just going to make this dummy folder. Place everything in there. And now if I select everything here, save it as a template. It'll very quickly bring everything right back up. And there we have it. Well, so we've gone through the painstakingly manual way of inserting a synthesizer, both monophonic and polyphonic. Um, now I'll just show you how Reaper wants you to do it. So insert virtual instrument on new track. Uh, and then just have your instrument choose this, be easy. Now, if you want multiple outputs, you can just click yes and it'll set it all up. You're not finished because it only set up the outputs and it didn't actually put in any MIDI tracks, but just click options and build 16 channels of MIDI routing to this track. And actually now you're completely finished. Everything is set up the way it needs to be. All the routing is already set up. Um, what you might want to do is uh, set all tracks to automatic record arm. That'll just save you a click every time you want to go somewhere else. But actually, this is all you need to do. Um, in the next video, I'll talk about how exactly it set up these um, auxiliaries and uh, output. These are all outputs, actually. Auxiliary, it's just, uh, it's just a contact thing, which is kind of irrelevant um, because Reaper treats it all the same way. But actually, everything is set up. And all I would recommend is... Um, that you have a little bit more organization than it's giving you now. So you might want to do things like giving the outputs a different color. You can just go track custom colors and whatever. Um, you can have it have a ugly fuchsia. You can make a parent folder track. Just take all these and and put them into this folder. Um, you can do whatever you want, but actually everything is set up now. So as you see, Reaver does have a fast and easy way to build all the routing that it needs um, to make a virtual instrument. Uh, I just wanted to show you everything the hard and boring way so that you understand what's actually going on. And you can tweak it however you want now. And once again, it's good to save templates. So in, save track as template and so on and so forth so that you don't even have to do that anymore. You can just right click and bring up a template and it just comes up.